So one of the main states in the theory about cooperation is the prisoner's dilemma. It's the situation where you have two prisoners that can choose to cooperate or defect from each other. If both cooperate, things are going to go well for them. If both defect, things go relatively badly. And if one cooperates and the other defects, he will of course get all the uh, win from that. And the foolish cooperator will lose out. So if two individuals play this just once against each other, game theory typically predicts that you should defect. Which leads to a situation where everybody is worse off when they had been cooperating. And typically people have been arguing this is why you need a government or some central organization to get people to cooperate with each other. However, if you repeat this, you, if you're playing the game again and again and again, things change. Because now I can remember what you did to me last time. So if you cheated on me, well, maybe I can cheat back. Suddenly it's not very fun to cheat anymore. It turns out that in the iterated prisoner's dilemma where you repeat it, there are some strategies that are stable. Always cooperating is not a good idea because you can be exploited. Always defecting is also a bad idea because you typically you don't win very much because people remember that you're a bad guy. If you start out by cooperating and then doing what the other guy did last time, tit for tat, that turns out to work very well because the players who follow that strategy, they can start cooperating with each other and get the rewards. Meanwhile, defectors, well, they can fool them once, but that's it. They can't get anything more. It turns out that this kind of reciprocal altruism, you're nice, but not uh, unlimitedly nice, uh, and you're nice only to those who are nice to you, is a rather stable method. There are all sorts of variations. For example, if you're in noise, if people make mistakes, then it can turn out that you need to adjust the strategies. But this kind of reason led me to my own awakening kind of as a libertarian. Maybe we don't really need a government to force us to behave well. We can actually figure it out rationally ourselves. The problem, of course, turns out to be that most of us are not that rational. It's actually fairly tricky to remember what everybody did and uh, handle this well. So it might mean that we need to make ourselves much smarter in order to become nicer. I, I regard myself as a heretic libertarian. I'm not a card-carrying political libertarian. I'm just generally suspicious about any idea about centrally planning the future. Because we know very well that uh, central planning don't work well. Humans make mistakes. And if we centralize those mistakes, that means that the stupid uh, decision is going to affect everybody. Instead, what we should be doing is trying out a lot of different possibilities, see what works and use those. And in that case, you don't need central planning. You just need to allow people to try out a lot of different things. This works well when mistakes are not lethal. The problem happens, of course, when dealing with existential risk. If a mistake means that the world is destroyed, well, in that case, maybe we can't allow people to make any mistakes. So that leads to a central paradox, in my opinion. In the case of really big risk, we might need central planning. But central planning also means that that coordination can sometimes fail and lead us into disaster. And generally people have very different intuitions about governments or other forms of regulation and coordination. I typically feel suspicious about them. I notice that we're built out of humans with cognitive biases and make group decisions full of bias and group thinking. Others, of course, see that we're also led by nice values and are trying to do something well. And at least we can uh, get rid of the politicians uh, if they uh, behave badly. If companies behave badly, well, at most we can do is not pay in, uh, buy their products and that way we'll hopefully go out of business. So a lot of this is about what forms of coordination work best. And I don't think there is any, uh, the single best fit. In different domains, it might turn out that very different approaches work. On the internet, for example, a lot of things can be done for free. Or rather, you have people doing things and other people copying the software if it's useful. That works well if the threshold of entry is very low. It's easy to write software and share it. It might not work as well for coordinating a society. So we need to become better at the science of finding good forms of coordination. And right now, this is scattered all over the place. We have a little bit of it in philosophy, some of it in political science, some of it in economics, some of it in game theory. We might need to merge that into something better.